Hey guys, it's Trisha with Upcycled Stuff. So today I want to show you, actually I want to show you a couple of things. First and foremost, I want to show you how to make this pallet clock from an old picture frame easel and a piece of pallet wood or any kind of scrap wood that you have. But I'm also going to show you the thought process that goes into upcycling materials. Um, this video is one of me doing something for the first time. I had never made a clock in this fashion before. So you'll see that upcycling isn't always perfect. In fact, it rarely is, but um, it's fun to see the thought process at least and try to apply that to other projects in your home. So I hope you enjoy it and excuse the fumbles in advance. There's quite a few different pieces that you're gonna need to make this project and hopefully you have a lot of them laying around the house already. But the very basic pieces to make your clock or to make a clock like mine is that you'll need an old picture frame and this is one that I picked up at Goodwill. It had a Sandals Resort logo on it and I painted it out. The frame I'm actually gonna use for something else. The piece you wanna use, you wanna take your frame apart and this is all you're gonna use is this piece. So if you have a broken picture frame, the glass broke or the wood just fell apart, um, just hang on to that and we're gonna use that as the backing to our clock. You'll need some kind of scrap wood. I have a piece of pallet wood here that I'm going to use. And then finally, you'll need your clock components. I think this was a four pack when I first bought it. You can see I cut off two pieces at the top. But I bought these at Hobby Lobby. You can get them at any um, craft store. And they're pretty easy to come by. They're pretty inexpensive. Some of the tools that you'll want to use for your clock are, first of all, you'll need a sander. Um, I have a palm sander in the back there. Um, and that's just for sanding out any... Uh, rough wood that you might be using. I'm using an old piece of pallet and it's in pretty rough shape. So I'm going to give it a good sand. Then I'm going to need a drill with um, a drill bit. This is a quarter inch drill bit and it's the size that I need to drill a hole for my clock component to fit through the wood. And then for gluing all of my wood together to the backing you'll need some wood glue and some clamps for holding it in place. And if your wood is not cut to the right size already, you'll need some kind of a skill saw, um, chop saw. I'm actually going to use a, a chop saw to cut mine to the right length. So you'll need something to cut your wood with as well. And then of course you'll need some supplies to decorate the face of your clock. I'm actually going to use some paints that were um, picked up off of the Oopsie Daisy paint table at the hardware store. I don't know if that's actually the technical term, but it's the place where people return paints that they're not going to use. So I think these ones are usually five or six dollars. I pay a dollar for them. So I'm going to mix a couple of those together. And then I'm not very good at freehand drawing numbers and keeping them all the same size. So I'm going to use my Big Shot, my Sizzix Big Shot die cut machine. And these are some number plates. And I'm going to cut them out of contact paper and then adhere them to the surface of so the So I'm clock. ready to take my wood outside and cut it into equal lengths, enough to cover um, this piece of the frame. The one thing I want to point out is that that back piece, the little easel portion of this component to your frame, is usually much lo um, longer than that cardboard, cardboard piece. So if you were to set that up on its own and have the wood the same length as this piece of cardboard, it's probably going to fall over because that's not very stable. Also, when you turn it on its side, you have the same thing. It's not very stable. It wants to fall forward. So I'm actually going to cut my wood to the same size as the frame was. And then I know I won't have any issues with it being stable or not. So I'm going to go ahead and measure out my picture frame and then cut my board to lengths and get them sanded and brought back inside so we can get them assembled. Now I have my three boards cut to size. They've been sanded and I didn't go too crazy on the sanding. I was going for a rough look. So I used 100 grit paper in my sand, in my sander and um, left a lot of rough spots, but I pulled off places where you could get splinters and um, smoothed out the corners because you know, telling time shouldn't be painful. Um, so now I have a choice. I have two different colored sides 
and I think for my color scheme, I will be painting, but you'll be able to see some of the wood. I'm going to go with this brown color. So the first thing I'm going to do is attach the easel back. So since I'm going with the gray side as the back, I'm going to flip these all over, line them up nice and straight. And then I'm going to take, here's my original frame that I used. Now the boards are actually longer, but they're the same height, which is what I was going for. I'm going to eyeball this. Now you could get anal, and which I should be probably, but you can get anal and measure out the exact center, but I figure why reinvent the wheel. I'm going to take a pen and just trace out this area here, which should be about the size of this easel back. And that's going to be where I glue it down. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick trace. And that's going to be my approximate location of this here piece. So it's going to be about there. It's not um, a perfect science, but it keeps me from having to um, worry about this piece being too long and making the clock unstable. So I'm going to use a little bit of wood glue wood glue. But I'm just going to slather it all over this here board, um, the chipboard, and then I'm going to use some clamps and clamp it down on my board. I think I'm going to use some clamps. I'm looking at my clamps now and I don't think they're big enough. I might have to use a book. Okay, so just as in Hollywood, <laughs> all things don't go as planned when you're filming, so I might have to wing it a little bit. But let's get this started and see where it takes us, yeah? Let's put on some wood glue. And you want to make sure when you add your easel back that you attach this before you do any painting because the glue is going to adhere to the wood um, and it won't necessarily attach very well to painted wood. So much as I'd like to paint right now, I think I might have to paint after this is attached. Okay, so I'm straightening this bit out a little. I'm going to just slide it to the edge of the table and see if I can get one of these clamps to fit on it. So as it turns out, <laughs> my clamps are actually not big enough and I don't have a workshop full of different size clamps, so we're going to wing it. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and quickly because my glue is drying as we speak. Actually, I think if I keep it attached in the right place on the middle one, it'll be okay to line these up. Gets flipped over. It's that thing when you're playing with trash, there's not necessarily a rule book for everything that you do, so you kind of have to make it up as you go along sometimes. I actually am thinking that this is going to be a better idea because some of the wood, a lot of pallet wood, is warped, and this is too. So I think this, this uh, heavy brick on each end here is probably going to help it adhere a little bit better than clamps would have anyway unless I had a gajillion clamps. So I'm going to let this set. The directions tell you to give it 30 minutes to be dry but to get the best bond they tell you to leave it overnight. So because we have some painting and what not to do I'm going to come back and we'll do the decorating of the clock face while it continues to cure. So I've let my paint cure overnight and this is what it looks like. I've um, gone ahead and I've taken some contact paper and some die, um, die cuts from my Big Shot machine and I've cut out some numbers for the clock as well as a design that I'm going to put in the four corners which I'm going to lay off the edge just because it's so big I don't want it to overwhelm the clock too much. In order to lay this out properly and make sure that I have everything centered right I did find center of both of my boards, find the exact center which is where I'll drill my hole for my clock pieces and then I've used those lines to lay out my numbers. So I just wanted to show you this before I took the backing off. Um, I'm going to take the paper off of the um, contact paper and then I'm going to put the contact paper down and paint over it and use it as sort of a reverse stencil. Um, I might do some painting afterwards inside of it but for right now I'm going to leave it a natural color underneath the designs and the numbers. So let me go ahead and get those stuck down and then we'll get a hole drilled. Okay, so I'm out in the garage. I have my clock with all of my vinyl laid out and I have my center point marked. 
I just want to drill a hole now through that point for my uh, clock pieces to be able to fit through. Now, the one thing I want to point out is on the back side, my center point is about right here. And when I lift the easel, you can see that if I were to start on the back side and start drilling here, there's really not enough room for my drill to go straight up and down. I'd be on an angle. Um, so I am actually going to drill a hole straight through my easel. It's not going to compromise the integrity of the piece. Uh, and it's on the back side, so it's not going to be ugly or anything. And once the easel's open, my clock pieces will fit under here. It's just a matter of getting the hole um, straight through the piece. So I'm actually going to start on the front side. And I honestly think that if you start on the back, that's fine too. But since I laid everything out according to this center, I want to make sure that this is the center that my hole comes through. And if I am slightly off on the back, it might throw off the entire design of the clock. So, so here we go. Now I want to see if I got through the chipboard and not the table. Yep, I did. Looks like I looks like I got that perfectly. I don't see any holes. Well, small miracles. All right, so now I'm going to take this back inside. We'll do some painting. I'm going to make sure that my clock piece fits in there before I do that, though. Okay, so I've used my trusty little uh, Starbucks cup here to mix up a couple of colors to get a very soft mint color green. And I want to do um, a mostly dry brush technique on here, so I'm just going to dab this off a little bit before I start painting with it. I don't want it to be so dry, but I don't want it to be very heavy either. I want to be able to see some of the natural wood. I'm just going to go ahead and paint right over all the vinyl that I put on there. So when you're doing the dry brush technique, you don't um, have to let it dry for very long. So I'm probably just going to set this aside for about an hour. And then that's all the color that I want to add as far as the clock face. I do want to come back, remove the vinyl, and touch up um, or put a new color, a different color on the number so that they really pop. Um, and then I don't know what I'm going to do with the designs yet. I might just leave them so that you can see the natural wood through. Um, I might decide to do another color. We'll see what happens when I take the vinyl off. Okay, so that didn't quite take an hour. It's probably about 30 minutes and I feel very confident about um, touching and leaving my hands all over it and not smudging. So I'm just gonna take another color. I was gonna do black, but I think I wanna try brown. It's more the colors of my bathroom and I'm just gonna color in Okay, so I think I have my clock where I want it. Um, I have all the paint um, designs and numbers painted out. I did go ahead and just use a regular old paint marker, um, a thin lined one, so that I could outline all the numbers and the designs. But now I want to roughen that up a little bit so it doesn't look like such a new paint job in contrast to the green. So I'm just going to use a um, fine grit sandpaper, this is 220, to go ahead and rough up the surfaces. And then I'm going to um, use a damp cloth to get rid of the sawdust and then I will use a clear wax here just a paste wax to cover um, the design and then we can finish it up with the clock parts so just a little sanding And you could use a tack cloth for this part as well.
And this is a good wax that you would use like on a piece of furniture that you've refinished in the house. You can do a coat or two. Um, you can also use some kind of a like spray um, sealer just to finish it off, depending on the look you're going for. You could get a satin or a glossy. And then I'm just going to use the clean side of the cloth to wipe off any excess. I just want to let this dry for a little bit. It doesn't take too long. So once this is dry, we can just insert our clock parts and we'll be done. Okay, so here's the back side of my clock. I have my clock mounting piece here. Now there's um, just something I want to point out here. I didn't have much of a choice as to where to put this hole. I mean, I guess I did. I could have designed the clock differently, but then my clock face would have been off center. When I lift this up, I have just enough room to fit this piece into here and fit snugly here, but it's going to be um, tilted this way rather than um, the way it, I guess that traditionally you would find a clock piece on the back of a clock. So just be aware that when you're drilling your hole, you might run into this problem. So you might want to check that before you drill your hole. So just go ahead and insert. I'm going to put this over here. <clears throat> your clock piece. And the other thing is, you've got this much, you can't put your easel down. So when you stand it up, you don't, ha you can't really adjust the position of the way your clock looks. So in that case, you just might want to consider designing your the clock face a little bit differently if keeping this mobile is important to you. Okay, so then just follow the package instructions to put your clock hands in place here. And the finished clock sitting in the bathroom. We need to add a few decorating touches, but the clock is finished.